Hi, this is Huawei. I'm going to present you the movement of capitals of old China and its reasons. The reason to choose this topic is that after researching a lot of materials and reading a lot of books, I found it is interesting that old Chinese government has moved its capitals so many times. Probably no other countries in the world except perhaps India has moved its seat of government so often or so far as China. The movement has generally been logical and the sitting was usually shown an attempt to resolve tension between the rival claims of production and defense. The figure above shows the many capitals of China along the history. The movement of, China, of Chinese capital is mainly from here we call the central, to here we call the west, and then to here we call the east, and then finally to here Beijing which is the modern Chinese capital. In early post neolithic in early post-Neolithic times, when Chinese civilization was just developing, states and principalities of North China were small and isolated. Communications were poor and there was very little consequences, consciousness of or contact with neighbors. The focal center of uh, capital of these small communities were based on local factors and had only local significances. It was not until late Shang times when Zhou began to encroach from the west and that the sitting of the capital began to have really wide significances. The Zhou, they destroyed the Shang capital at Anyang and uh, removed the seat of government to Chang'an. Then the Zhou dynasty ushered in the classic feature era and it was not long before the ruler found it necessary to build a new capital which was more central for internal control. This they did at, An at Luoyang, which lies to the south of Hunan, uh, Huanghe, Henan, above the flood plain. As we mentioned before, after Shang period, the sitting of a capital began to have really wide significances. The capitals of the kingdoms were no longer simply the seat of political power. They tended to become big commercial and manufacturing centers. During worry state, before Qing has taken down all of its enemies, it has captured Xianyang for a long time, which makes Xianyang become its heartland. Xianyang ha was located inside the valley, which has natural guardians to protect the capital not only from northerners, Xiongnu, but also from the general that Qin Shi Huangdi sent to against Xiongnu. As we mentioned before, the capital has been moved to the east later, and the reason for that is because of the lack of food along the Yellow River Basin. However, at Qin Dynasty, the population wasn't too big, so they can remain in there. Qin Shi Huangdi preferred to maintain his own former capital at, at Chang'an. When his short but very mentorous region ended, his conquerors, the Han, uh, reverted to Luoyang as capital but very soon transferred their seat of government once more to Chang'an. China enjoyed a united rule for 680 years, between the end of Zhou and the fall of Tang. During this time, Chang'an was capital of the empire for 530 years. It was not until the economic heart of the country shifted into the Huai and Yangtze Valley that Chang'an lost its ascendancy. Uh, after the time period, the mainly capital has been moved from uh, the central to the east. In 907, Tang Dynasty fell to the Kidan attacks from Manguria. Then followed a further long period of disunity, the Kidan Kingdom of Liao was established in the north, having Yinchen, which is Beijing, for a capital, while the Chu Chinese Kingdom of North Song moved to Kaifeng to hold the gate to the north, to the south. Later, under Mongol threat from the north, Southern Song Emperor fled south and made Hangzhou their center. 
Nanjing being too valuable, Hangzhou suffered temporarily when the, when the mango on the Kublai Han defeated Song, but it quickly rose again, although never as a capital. At Ming Dynasty, the capital has been moved from Nanjing to Beijing. The reasons to move the capital is because that uh, emperor, the emperor Zhu Li was the ruler of Beijing when he started the coup, so his major force remains at Beijing, just like Qin Shi Huang did when he became the emperor. Also, usually emperors who got the throne while starting coups wants to make some changes to eliminate the under threats. Uh, second one is that after realizing the threats from the north, Zhu Li wanted to do more to expand his territory. When the Ming drove out the Mongols in 1368, they favored Nanjing as their center for 34 years. But in 1402, they moved to Beijing. The capital remained there throughout the rest of Ming and Qing. Beijing proved a good central from which Kublai Han could govern China itself and from which, at the same time, he could keep in touch with his vast steppe land territories to the west. For the Ming, although they drove out the Mongols from China but never subdued them in their own lands to the north, Beijing served to hold the gate against them. The Manchus entered and conquered China mainly through the narrow narrow coast plain of Ruhe at Shanghai Guan. Against Beijing was admirable, suitable uh, for the simultaneous government by the Qing emperors both of China and their own home territories in Manchuria. In summary, uh, the main reasons to move the capitals is because of communication, internal control, protection, under threats, political reasons, and near their original territories. That's it. Thank you for watching.